Hey everybody, Jake here with Jake Wu Market Research, and this is going to be my first weekend update on my new YouTube channel. If you guys enjoy these videos or have seen uh, some of my previous videos, definitely please uh, like and subscribe. Really appreciate all the support I've gotten already, and uh, really excited to get a lot of weekend updates and, and market updates in general out for everybody, as well as educational videos on some of the things that I use, um, especially in this video as well. So SR flips, volume shelves, those types of things, I will be working on some individual videos to uh, really focus on what exactly that is and, and examples of all of these different types of things. So uh, let's start off with SPY, and uh, we're gonna look at the daily and then the weekly chart for all of the names that we'll be going over. You'll see the names here in the uh, the far right in this watch list. So these are the names we'll be going over. Um, so for SPY, a nice breakout on Thursday, pretty much from the trend zone originating from February. Uh, so you can see here that we've got more of a trend zone. The outer part of the zone is highlighted by the solid line. And then the uh, more secondary kind of inside part of this zone is highlighted by the dashed line. So you can see here that we did have a breakout, a retest, an SR flip essentially, which is essentially previous resistance becoming support or previous support becoming resistance. Regardless, it's called an SR flip. You can call it an RS flip if you want, uh, but generally the generic term for either one is just an SR flip. So uh, we did have an SR flip here. We did hit a new high on Friday. We have a gap above at 421.22 and it's taken quite a while to fill that. So uh, if we do continue up and this SR flip holds, then that gap above would definitely be your target. Now, a breakdown and close below 409.25, which is the bottom of this uh, trend zone, would be your invalidation for further upside and possibly uh, a move down to test the gaps below. You have a gap below that fills right around uh, 396.50. So that would be an area to watch if we do get a break below this trend zone. Uh, but for now, an SR flip and uh, upside looks like a higher probability setup at this point. Now on the weekly chart, you can see here that we did actually break out of this longer term trend zone here, originating from the all time highs. You can see here that we had a strong weekly candle here uh, and volume is supporting price here shown by the volume profile. Uh, and you can see here, this is a volume shelf. Anytime the price can close above the top of the shelf or above the point of control of whatever shelf you're looking at, that is when I'm going to have the volume shelf is green. If the price is below the point of control of a volume shelf that I'm looking at, then it is going to be yellow or orange for that kind of caution flag. So uh, a volume shelf can be essentially an aggregation of volume nodes that does not include the true point of control. The point of control for a volume profile is essentially the largest volume node in all of the volume nodes. So all of these volume nodes here are essentially measuring where volume has occurred since essentially all time highs a couple weeks before that but at the same you know at the same time it's not going to change if we move this over a little bit the volume profile will change as i move the visible range so this is just the visible range volume profile on trading view you can see here that it really didn't change at all when i move this over a little bit so you can see the volume shelf is supporting uh, price here and you can see the volume, uh, the volume gap and the price gap above. You don't have a lot of shares above to act as friction for price. So let's move on to the Qs. A very classic SR flip, a horizontal SR flip, meaning that just basic horizontal level here was previous resistance back in February and March. Then we broke out in late March, pulled back, retesting that resistance zone, now flipping to support over the last two weeks. And that's what we're going to call an SR flip. You can see here the gap fills above at 321.63, this price gap. Um, and if you look at the weekly chart, you'll see here that we also have volume supporting price. We have a essentially a uh, the third weekly close above the all-time high anchored VWAP. And you can see here uh, price is being supported by volume. You can see there's a huge volume gap above, not a lot of volume essentially above, meaning price can move very quickly through this area. Uh, it's essentially a vacuum for price. So, you know, if we were just to uh, look at where we may find uh, an area where we, we could potentially hit some resistance, it would just simply be this previous high. So if we're looking at this previous high from August, that would be right around 334 to 335. Um, you know, you're never going to have an exact precise level, so don't even try. Always kind of look at these zones as an area rather than an exact point on the chart. Price is just never going to respect anything perfectly. 
On IWM, you can see here that we do have this inverse head and shoulders here that is still playing out. An outside bar here on Friday, so not the best looking bar here and, and a bearish engulfing candle as well. Uh, however, the neckline is pretty defined here, so pretty much above 179, a break and close on the on the daily close above 179 would definitely trigger a move up to test the swing high anchored VWAP, which is right around 180.39. Uh, the VWAP is going to sometimes be an exact level, uh, but a lot of the time I do use zones and uh, I will start using zones uh, as we move forward um, for the VWAP. But since we have this gap here, uh, we can kind of create this zone just using the gap. The gap fills at 181.28 and that would be your your upside area to watch um, for uh, for potentially a move up. Now, if we break below this uh, Wednesday this Wednesday low and close below it, then we could definitely be retesting this uh, right shoulder around 172.75. Uh, so that is the daily side of things. If we want to look at the weekly side of things, you can see here that we have a potential SR flip. As you uh, probably remember the last uh, couple minutes when we were talking about SR flips. Uh, they can be more than just horizontal. They can also be diagonal as we've seen um, on SPY. So here's another one, previous support shown by these green arrows now acting as potential resistance and even possibly a bear flag here. So, um, you know, this is something to definitely put in the, uh, the bear thesis jar. And uh, until we can really break above, let's call it around 183 on the weekly candle, this is definitely an SR flip uh, and, and potentially a bear flag uh, forming here. So uh, there are reasons to be cautious in, the, cautious in the market right now, and IWM on the weekly chart is definitely uh, one of those reasons. Let's look at Bitcoin. Uh, really, Bitcoin has just uh, been kind of stair-stepping up. We're pretty much in this May to June 2022 consolidation area. So pretty much we had this consolidation zone in May and June of 2022. We haven't retested that area until now, and that's pretty much where we're stuck. So until we can really close on the daily above 31,800, uh, we may just be stuck here for a little bit. We'll have to see. Uh, now, if you look at the weekly chart, you'll see that there's actually a decent uh, candle forming here. So uh, something to keep in mind on the day on the weekly chart, excuse me, is essentially this uh, this volume gap that we have, almost similar to the Qs, right? So if you can see see the volume profile here, you'll see that you know you do have some volume supporting price here, but once again we have this kind of vacuum here where there's not a lot of volume, not a lot of transactions that have occurred pretty much since the all time highs back in 2021. So we do have this gap above. Um, you know, we have closed above the all-time high anchored VWAP uh, back in March of 2022, and that was a fake out. So definitely, uh, you know, you want to have a little margin of error around this area. But we'll have to see how the weekly candle closes. I did this video on Saturday, so we would have one more day of price action uh, into Sunday. So let's see how this closes. But as we talked about on the daily chart, we are kind of in a pretty important consolidation zone. So until we can get above that 31,800 on the daily and close above it, uh, we may be kind of uh, trading in some doldrums, uh, if you want to call it that, on the uh, on the crypto side of things. Now, Ethereum kind of is its own, its own beast. We did actually break out of the May and then August 2022 consolidation zone. So a little different than what we saw on Bitcoin. And remember, an SR flip, a lot of the time, uh, is is almost expected, right? So just a retest here and then continuation up, that's, you know, a lot of the time, that's what you're going to see. So uh, don't necessarily be shocked if, if we do see that. Um, and, uh, and that would be a retest of the 1900 to 1950 zone below. Um, but if you look at the weekly chart, you'll see here that we do have uh, kind of this, one, this volume gap from the all-time highs, so not a lot of uh, not a lot of volume above. Now, if you anchor a VWAP from the all-time high here, you'll see that we're trading right at it. So that could definitely be a, an area uh, to keep an eye on um, as as a potential resistance zone into the next couple of weeks. Now, the main thing that I actually want to point out here on Ethereum is is simply just this uh, this moving average cross. Sometimes a simple moving average cross could be the signal that 
that you need for a basic trend change. In this case, we're going to turn on the 20 and the 50 SMA. You'll see here that back in uh, May of 2020, we had the, the uh, 20 crossing above the 50, and pretty much we had an insane uptrend since then. And you can see the, uh, the uptrend ended and the downtrend began when the 20 crossed below the 50. So you can see that here. Uh, so a pretty clear signal, a pretty simple signal. Things don't have to be complicated in the markets or technical analysis, only if you want them to be and you make them. So in this case, we have the 20 week crossing back above the 50 week. So this is definitely something to consider. And remember, a lot of the time when you have this big of a move like you had on Ethereum, sometimes you're going to get a slight pullback. So, you know, don't think that we're just going to go straight up. Uh, the, the markets have to digest supply in order to continue to go up. But on the longer term trend here, the 20 week did cross above the 50 week. And uh, that would and has been considered a, uh, a bullish move uh, signal to the upside uh, in the past. Now let's go over Sol, uh, old Solana. This is an interesting one. I am going to turn on the volume profile here just to show you guys something interesting. If we kind of pull this back pretty much from the highs back in August, you'll see here that there's not a lot of volume supporting price uh, once we get above around 2550. So same thing, you kind of have this, almost this, uh, this vacuum for price. Now we also have essentially this ascending triangle forming. So that is something to consider as well. We're kind of stuck in this, stuck within this area here. And we'll just keep the volume gap so you can get an idea of where that is uh, without the volume profile. But until we can really close right around, uh, I'm gonna call it, and we'll just essentially take these highs. So from here, right around 2715, uh, we are stuck kind of in this area, this uh, setup. Now, remember, we're getting closer and closer to the apex of this ascending triangle. A lot of the time, ascending triangles do have a statistical bias to the upside, but you'd need to wait for price action to uh, confirm that. So for now, this is just uh, simply a setup forming uh, based on price action that has occurred. If we get a daily close below the outer part of this zone, uh, that would be your bear. Uh, that would be your bear trigger. If you get a daily close above the top of the zone, as we mentioned, right around 27.15, that would be your bull trigger. Now, remember, since this is a diagonal line, this is going to change. If we went straight down tomorrow, let me get the old highlighter out here. If we went straight down tomorrow, this is where your invalidation would be. Now, if it took us a couple other days. Let's say it takes us, you know, five, six, seven days. Then all of a sudden, your bear trigger is going to be here. It's different prices because the slope is a function of time. It's changing as time goes by. So just keep in mind when you are using diagonal zones, you're not going to have a static uh, trigger. It's going to change with time. Now, when you use a horizontal level like this, that's going to be a static trigger, meaning you know the price doesn't change. This this previous high from February uh, is definitely your trigger um, for a daily close above that would be your bull trigger. Now on the weekly chart, you'll see for Seoul, we did have a pretty strong breakout here. So let's get rid of these moving averages for now. You'll see that uh, you know the moving averages, at least the 50 is still declining. Your 20 week is starting to move up again. Uh, so still a little work to do here on Seoul on the weekly chart. But I did want to mention that, you know, we did break out of this longer term uh, trend zone, down sloping trend zone, pretty strong candle here. Uh, and if we do, you know, have a little bit of a pullback, expect simply just, um, let me pull out the old uh, highlighter again. You, know, you can always expect a retest and then continuation up. It's, it's very common to see that. So anytime you have a breakout, just remember that this is very common to have a pullback. So if you want to be a breakout buyer, go for it. But a lot of the time, there's a little more success in just waiting for a pullback and a retest. If we do continue up, this VWAP above is right around 32. That's from the March 22 pivot. So definitely keep that in mind on the, uh, on the daily and weekly timeframes for Seoul. Now let's go into some individual names on the equity side of things. We'll start with coin. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, coin is really uh, a proxy for the crypto markets. Um, now, 
with with some of the weird news that they had over the last couple of weeks that definitely spooked the markets but if you want to just see kind of where volume is supporting price you can see that price is pretty much closed right at this volume shelf so you do have volume supporting price here you have a gap fill at 7686 now if you look at the weekly chart you'll also see uh, volume supporting price here from a longer term standpoint so if we look at the volume profile pretty much looking back all the way to we'll call this uh, the November 21 high you'll see that there's a lot of volume supporting price here that's because you've had a lot of price action here so essentially the more that price aggregates somewhere the the more volume you're going to have. So regardless, you can see there's a lot of volume that's taken place here. Would love to see a close above the shelf here around 72.25, let's just call it 72.50. Uh, and uh, you know, that would definitely trigger a bigger move. You can see here that we already had that a couple times and that was a false breakout. So if you did want to use some higher uh, triggers here, uh, you could definitely use around 84.50. Now, once again, uh, anchored, VWAP, anchored VWAP to the rescue. This is exactly, what these wicks were a function of essentially testing that VWAP and pulling back so really if we can get above this VWAP and at this point it's around 83.21 remember that's going to change as price action occurs uh, and volume uh, volume occurs but right now it's around 83.21 as price is below this VWAP the VWAP is slowly going to start continuing down it's only when the price can close above that VWAP and really start getting some volume above this VWAP, that's when the VWAP will start turning to the upside. Uh, and that's something I've learned from Brian Shannon. If you're not familiar with Brian Shannon, definitely give him a follow on Twitter, at Alpha Trends. He has a new book on the Anchored VWAP and literally everything you wanna know about the Anchored VWAP and how to use it is in that book. Um, so definitely go to his Twitter profile to check out um, potentially getting that book if you'd like. Um, so that is Coin. Let's go into Tesla here. Tesla is one holding the January low VWAP. So that is pretty much the main thing we want to see. You can see here that we have not broken below the January low VWAP as far as a function of closing prices. So we did have an intraday breakdown below uh, this January low VWAP in March, but we did end up closing above it. And you can see we're still holding on to that. And if you look at the volume profile, you can see we're trading right at the point of control here. So you know, not a lot to go off here. If you look at the the weekly chart, kind of the same thing, to be honest. You've got the September 2022 uh, pivot here, and you've got the uh, January low VWAP, pretty much kind of creating this area of support. So until we close below this on the weekly chart, we're kind of range bound here. And if you want to look at kind of a longer term view here, you can see that we also have essentially this... Uh, this SR flip zone that we'd want to get above. So you can see here, previous support back in May of 2022, June of 2022, uh, October of 2022, we finally broke down and now we have not been able to close above this zone as you can see here. So this has been a resistant zone um, multiple times over the last couple months. So until we can really close above, let's call it uh, right around two, the previous highs that we saw in February, right around 217, this is, this is definitely a little range bound uh, for Tesla. Going into Apple, uh, Apple continues to hold this uptrend here. So let's turn off the volume profile and just look at basic price action. Holding this, uh, holding this trend zone here, uh, we do still have a gap above 171.31. Definitely would be your upside target. Downside target would simply just be this gap below. So uh, one, right around 158.40. And until we break below this trend zone and actually close below it, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not really looking at that gap below. But it's important to know where it is. And I mentioned right around 158.40, that's your downside gap. Your upside gap fills right around 171.31. So if you want to see that visually real quick uh, on the chart, I will just highlight this gap uh, here for you on the downside, which is right here. And so that is that is essentially where you want to watch below. Uh, so those are your gaps, both upside and downside gaps. Remember, you always want to know both sides of the equation to keep yourself open minded and only reacting to price action. Going into the weekly chart of Apple, you can see here that we do have a pretty strong resistance zone above. Notice here what I did. Essentially, I 
I have two parallel lines, right? Your, your outer trend zone is your solid line here. Uh, and then your inner trend zone is essentially just a parallel line starting at this wick here. And you can see how well price has respected both of these, these areas. And that's what creates the zone. So up to right around 170, which is right where that gap is, that's where we're going to be running into potentially uh, that resistance zone above. And we'll see how that plays out into the week. Uh, coming week, but we do have a bullish engulfing candle here on the weekly chart showing, uh, you know, buyers in control. Going into NVIDIA, we pretty much just have a very simple setup here. We've got your March 13th pivot, your March 13th low here, anchoring a VWAP from this area. And you can see how well that price is respecting this area, especially on Friday. A pretty strong setup here going into the week ahead. Now, what's not as strong of a setup is the weekly chart. You pretty much at this point have an SR flip pretty much uh, going back to December of 2021. And then once again in March of 2022. So support in December of 21, uh, resistance back in March of 22. And now once again, we've got this resistance zone here. So until we can really close above 280, uh, definitely a reason to be cautious here for NVIDIA, especially after the move it's had. I mean, the problem is everyone still is trying to short this. And I think that's what's kind of keeping it up. Um, but, uh, but really, uh, if we close below this week's low, we could definitely be, uh, be testing maybe the mid or low two fifties into the week or two ahead. Next one we will go over is arc. So, uh, arc is definitely something that has done pretty much nothing over the last several weeks. You can see here that we're just very range bound. We are now starting to trade towards the end of the apex of the symmetrical triangle on the daily chart. If you look at the weekly chart, you'll see here that uh, we do have a decent weekly candle, meaning it was green if, you, uh, you know, if we want to be optimistic here. Uh, and another thing is the fact that you do have a lot of price supporting, uh, excuse me, a lot of volume supporting price here. The problem is if you look since the November 21 highs, we are trading a little below that volume shelf point of control. So remember when that occurs, we just switch that to yellow for caution. And, uh, and really you'd want, you'd want to have a close above these previous highs, uh, right around 40, 50. So if we can close above 40, 50 on the weekly chart, we may have a bigger move to the upside, but for then, uh, until then we're pretty much stuck within this range. Looking at Amazon, you can see here that if we turn on the volume profile, once again, uh, we do have a lot of volume supporting price here, uh, and, and a pretty strong two days to end the week. Um, we would like to see a close above this area, uh, which is right around 103, let's call it 103.25. And if that's the case, you do have a gap above, very small gap. You really have to uh, kind of squint your eyes to see it, but you do have a gap above at 108.88 for Amazon on the daily chart. On the weekly chart, you can see here that we have a pretty simple uh, symmetrical triangle here pretty much trading right up along the uh, resistance line here. And if we go back and if we want to measure volume, uh, pretty much from uh, some of the highs that we saw back in 2021, there is a lot of volume supporting price. Uh, price is slightly, slightly above the point of control, uh, but still, uh, still some caution to be warranted here. Uh, we'd want to see that close above really, let's call it 103 on the weekly chart, and that would be both a close above the point of control and also the resistance zone here uh, that we have on uh, the symmetrical triangle. Going into snow, this is definitely one of my favorite looks into the week ahead. Uh, so you have a volume shelf here, meaning volume is supporting price pretty much since this pivot here back in January. Um, a decent looking candle. You have been range bound the last four days. So a break and close above this, these two highs right around 144.50 would definitely trigger a bigger move to the upside here. And if we really get going, we do have a gap above that fills up here. Uh, let's call it, we don't have to call it. We know exactly what it will be right around 164. Uh, if you want to be exact, it's right around 163.90. And uh, that, is, uh, yeah, that is what we're looking at here on snow. A break and close below this previous low right around 136.50 would definitely invalidate uh, any type of bull setup here for snow. Now, if we look at the weekly chart, you'll see here that we do also have 
quite a bit of volume supporting price here. So if we're looking back pretty much from the November 21 highs, you'll see that price is above the point of control here. We're going to call it a volume shelf too, because you do have some volume nodes that are also sticking out, showing that volume is supporting price. Um, but we do have some work to do. We, we really need to see a strong candle going into the week ahead, a very strong uh, weekly close above last week's previous high. Um, let's call it right around 148. So the, the ideal bull thesis here would be a weekly close above 148 to potentially test those previous highs around 158 that we saw um, in the beginning of April. Last one, we have SHOP. Uh, SHOP is also looking pretty decent here. So on the daily chart, you can see that we do have volume supporting price shown by the volume shelf. Your point of control is actually up here right around 47.75. You can see that we have a little bit of a volume gap. So if I pull out the arrow here, you'll see not a lot of not a lot of volume in this general area. So price can move very quickly through that area to essentially gravitate up to this point of control around 47.75. Let's just call it 48, um, on the, which is the upside part of that point of control line. If we continue up from there, the gap fills at 50.21, and then you'll see here on the weekly chart that's when we would start running into uh, some previous resistance, both on support and the resistance side of things. So classic SR flip, support back in March of 2022, resistance back in January of 23 this year. And we are literally right at the apex of the symmetrical triangle. The apex is essentially just the end of whatever setup you're looking at, whether it's a symmetrical triangle, ascending triangle, uh, we're just very close to kind of making or breaking. Uh, if we break down, Let's turn off the volume profile so we can look at these areas. A breakdown and close below this uh, support zone would throw us in the 39 to 41 area below as a potential target on the downside. Upside target would be 51 to 53. Remember, we do have that gap above uh, right around 5021. So that would be your initial potential resistance, but then you also have a lot of price action to get through um, above that from 51 to 53 from uh, the longer term side of things. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you guys enjoy these videos and these updates, please like and subscribe. Uh, this is a new channel, so I'm really excited to get out a lot of market updates, a lot of educational videos, so you can understand a lot more about these videos when I, when I post them. I try to be as educational as I can within the market updates, but I will do some individual videos to really highlight some of these things in more detail um, and uh, really appreciate everyone's time watching. Hopefully it was helpful. We'll see you next time.